Welcome to another edition of What Keeps You Up at Night, The Life of an Entrepreneur. And joining us today is Ashley McFadden uh, with Taden's Treehouse. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. First of all, why don't you tell us what Taden's Treehouse is and what you do? So we are a gently used uh, children's store in Midland, Ontario. Um, so we offer the community sort of a eco option. Mm. Um, so as a mom, I know that kids um, outgrow their stuff really quickly. So we're offering our community a sort of way to recycle their items that have been outgrown and uh, buy new items that fit or that can be played with in the process. I love that environmentally conscious option. It's brilliant, especially in a smaller community. What led you maybe both professionally and personally to becoming an entrepreneur? Um, well, it wasn't something that I really had thought about at all until I had kids. Um, so our two little ones are fairly close in age and finding daycare was a struggle. Um, it was really hard to find daycare at all. And finding a spot for two was just next to impossible. Um, so I needed to think of something where I could um, sort of put my background to use, um, but as well have the flexibility of being able to, you know, take care of my kids. Or, um, you know, we just went through a couple of strike days and uh, I'm not going to lie, they had to come into work for a little bit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. And so what did you do before that? What, what did, so what I was your was profession? Actually, um, I was in the financial industry. Um, mm -hmm. So I started out at uh, BMO, Bank of Montreal, and sort of moved through, uh, through a couple of different branches and then a couple of different banks. And uh, then I had kids. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because I think some of the struggle and, and, and I say this as an entrepreneur myself, some of the struggle is often the financial piece. So, you know, the business plan, cash flow projections, all of those things. So what has been your steepest learning curve? Like what, it, what did you find the most challenging to learn? I think um, for me personally, it's actually sort of the, the marketing side of it mm. um, and the social media side of it. Um, those have been very difficult for me to figure out. And I'm still, every single day, I'm still learning. Um, that's been, I think, the biggest, number one, hardest thing for me to figure out through all of this. Were you open during the pandemic or did you start your business after? We were open during. Um, we opened in August of 2018. So we were just sort of um, getting into a good flow, getting, you know, we knew what was what to expect and how things were going to go. And then the pandemic hit and uh, that changed everything for us. How? How did it change everything? What did you have to do? Um, well, as a retailer, we were we went through that roller coaster, just like everybody else, where you were open and you were open for curbside pickup only and you were online. And um, so for us, uh, we have some of our new products we have duplicates of, but most of our items are unique. Um, and we have thousands of items in our inventory that just, you know, it wasn't possible to put them online. Um, so we tried our best to, to pivot to an online, you know, store and uh, figure out how we could make that work. But it was uh, definitely a struggle. Have you found any particular challenges as a female entrepreneur? I've heard some horror stories. <laughs> I think it's just a struggle to be taken seriously. I think, um, I think I have some amazing ideas. And I think, you know, I want to grow my business in so many different ways. Um, but it is very hard, I find, to be taken uh, seriously 
especially when you're in the children's clothing industry. Mm. Um, I've also heard retail as well. Retail is, is a struggle. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's the number one, just being taken seriously as a businesswoman and as a business owner. Um, so do you mean like uh, maybe at a local chamber or business association meeting, that kind of thing? Uh, yep. Um, even, you know, sometimes sitting down with, with the banks or um, different lenders, it, you know, it makes it being a woman makes it a little bit harder. Well, I think that's interesting. Having come from a financial um, institution background, you would have probably known that or, or ha- it may be experienced that I'm not sure. But on the other side of it, you know, being a woman and, and applying for a loan um, and you know, not being able to have a woman co-sign like your mom, for instance, if you're a younger person, um, and only having and and being asked to have your spouse co-sign a loan for you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> did that happen to you? <laughs> yeah, um, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, there's a lot of. Well, why isn't your husband, you know, part of your business? Um, you know, because that's not that's not how we like we talked about it. That's not how we decided to to do things. And. Yeah. Uh, you know, having to explain that is a little bit crummy. It's a little backward. I, oh. That's just my my thought. Yeah. <laughs> in, in a, you know, 2022 uh, financial economical background today, um, I think, you know, it's a little bit archaic. And um, let me ask you about what are the pros and cons of uh, having a business in a rural community? Um, I think the cons are you just, especially during startup, um, there was a lot of stress over, you know, am I going to have the customers? Am I going to be able to make these numbers that I think are going to work, work? Um, you don't really know what's going to happen. I find being in a small town, um, and especially through the pandemic, people were amazing. Our customers were so loyal so supportive. It was great. Um, but then there was the side of it where it's like, is this going to work? Can we, you know, do we have the, the number of people that we need to walk through the door every day? Um, so that was a bit of a con and a pro, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I mean, the pros are, especially for our business, there's nothing like it within, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, so we're providing a, a need for our community, which is great. It's great to wake up and do that every day. What keeps you up at night? What are the things that you worry about when you're, (laughs) when you're about to go to bed and you're laying there and you can't sleep, you're tossing and turning. What are you thinking about? Um, well, it's usually social media. Did I, you know, do enough posts? Did I answer that person's question? Did I, you know, reply back? Um, on top of that, there's the kids stuff, you know, did I remember to make lunches and, and, uh, you know, get all their stuff ready for the next day? Um, not going to lie, that one's a bit of a mom fail in the morning sometimes. <laughs> you know, I usually forget. Um yeah, just like little things that I never in a million years thought I would be, you know, thinking of, did I lock the door? Did I, you know, do all these, these things that you're, you're doing them at home, but then you're also doing them again in your business. So it's a lot to keep up with. What have been some of your most gratifying moments? What have you found the most beneficial and, and think back and think, okay, yeah, this is why I did it. Hmm, that's a tough one. I think part of it is, uh, like I said, there's days where the kids need to be with us for whatever reason, you know, they have to come in with mom. Um, and I think that those days, especially are days where I'm, you know, really grateful that I have that, that opportunity to bring them with me. 
Um, and then I think the other part of it too is just uh, the they're customers, but they're also friends. They're like family. Um, so you get to watch their kids grow up and you get to, you know, learn about them and, and be part of their lives on a regular basis, which is really nice to, to have that opportunity as well. Were there people that didn't believe that you could make a go of it? I think so. I don't think they, they weren't, you know, amazingly vocal about it or anything, but <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, there were a few things here and there. Um, we've been asked our, our buying program is unique in that we, um, we will offer cash, but we also, uh, do a store credit offer. Um, so if you need something in a bigger size, you've got a little bit more money to, to kind of stretch that a little bit further. And so one of the things I remember still, um, when we were first starting out, someone had asked me, well, how do you make any money if all you're doing is trading? And I went, huh, I'll show you. <laughs> so that's, that's one of the biggest, uh, things that, you know, stuck in my mind was, uh, you know, well, I have to, I have to prove that it can it, it, it can work. Who have been some of your biggest supporters? Who could you have not done it without? My husband. <laughs> um, from everything to moving boxes around. Um, even now, he helps me with the, the switch over, the seasonal changeover. Um, he builds all of my displays. He helps me move all of the racks around. He sets up Christmas trees. Um, there's no way I could have done it without his help. Um, and then I think my kids too. I mean, for, you know, understanding sort of, you know, why mom can't sit and watch that movie right now. Um, or why we can't, you know, do whatever crazy thing they think we should do on the weekend. <laughs> um, without my family, I don't think it would have happened. What do you wish someone would have told you before you went into business for yourself? Mm. That it was going to be a lot of late nights and hard work. And I mean, I had an idea, but um, just recently, another business owner said that, you know, he hasn't, this is the first time in eight years, he hasn't, you know, worked 70 hour weeks. And I was like, huh, <laughs> my goal is to, you know, move that timeline up a little bit, but uh well, that leads very well into the next question. Um, what is your hope or goal for the future, both for your business, but also for your community and maybe personally as well? So I think a big thing for me, um, again, being in a smaller town, I do want to be able to provide good quality jobs um, to people within our community. Um you know, and being a parent, I, I tend to gravitate towards mothers, um, you know, and I can, I can relate with, you know, if your kid is sick and you, you can't come in or you have to leave early or, or something like that, I want to be able to, uh, to provide a, a, you know, a job within the community where people are happy and they're, you know, doing something to help the community every day. Right. Um, personally, I'd like to be able to spend a bit more time with my kids <laughs> before they move out. Um, but that'll come once we're able to get a few more people on board and we'll go from there. I think that's really ambitious and, and, noble 
to want to um, contribute positions to your community um, because that means you're investing in the place where you live. Um, have Do you have a, a great um, support system where you are in Midland? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everybody... Um, everybody that I've come across has just been amazing and helpful. And, um, we actually, uh, we were in, we started out, uh, opening the store in Penetang and, um, we just recently moved to Midland in March. Um, and it was really nice to see even customers were, you know, offering to lend us a hand and, you know, um, oh, we have a truck if you need it or, and that was amazing. It was um, really, really heartwarming. Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what advice do you have for entrepreneurs that are, you know, maybe on the, on the cusp of wanting to start their own business and aren't quite sure whether they want to do it or not? What would you tell them? Um, I think doing the research making sure that all of your research is done first, the cash flows and the spreadsheets and the, you know, everything, even down to finding out what permits you would need, um, making sure that all of that works and, you know, doing projections and making sure that you can, you know, survive in the beginning is really important. Um, one thing I wished I had was somebody else sort of, um, as a mentor. Um, I mean, I did have the opportunity to speak to other business owners, but nobody did a, you know, secondhand children's store. Um, so there was certain things where I wished I had sort of somebody that I could lean on a little bit. Um, so my advice too would be find out if you, if there's somebody like that, available and take advantage. Definitely take advantage. Thank you so much. Um, you are an inspiration and I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Ashley. Thank you for having me. 